That works for me. Yay. Dun, 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 dun. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The... I was going to say the VSC edition. <laughs> it's Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Uh, the dear... No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not even that bad. The it's Adventures the Adventures of, of Liz, Liz and Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> it's our Tuesday check-in. I'm starting to call it that on uh, when I title them. It's the Tuesday mm-hmm. check-in. Like, of what we've done over the weekend and that kind of stuff. So, um, and yeah, I'm going to move this somewhere. We, we still have plenty of these in the shop, but unless we're putting it, like, right behind the microphone. It's kind of where it used to live. Yeah, but then the microphone moved. So yeah. So, we may find another spot on the table that's not in camera range for it, but we, uh, we still have lots of hand sanitizer and lots of masking. Hello! I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in rainy and dreary but maybe won't rain all day brevard north carolina i'm liz i'm the minion there mm. yeah mm. <laughs> uh, we're getting filming done only a tad early so that we can go try to pack packages that need to go out and those kind of things so um yeah we were just talking about i i should be the one messing up i'm the one didn't get any well you probably didn't get any sleep last night either I- I went to bed later than normal because I was waiting for mom and dad to get home home. Mm. And um, Mm -hmm. anyway, morning is just stupid. It is stupid. Would you like to show off your Christmas dress? Is this a new one? It's an old one, but I don't wear it very often because I don't know. I don't like it. You don't like it? Why are you wearing it? It it was there. (laughs) (laughs) I see red red and green paisley and stuff and it's it's super cute. It's very vintage Christmas. Vintage Christmas. I like it. So. And you've got some stripy underskirts going on. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not being Christmassy at all. In fact, this is more of my summer cardigan. But I figured I'd show off our shirts again. I'm wearing a blue one today. Um, we are narrowing down on a design for our Viking shirts. Yes. Um, my, my dad is not particularly happy with the language on them. If I came, I saw, I pillaged because um, the connotations of the word pillage, I'm like, but it works for the shop. It's a, it's it, a joke. It, people don't actually do violence in the shop, but it, um, it's, it's sarcastically speaking, we feel like we have been ravaged <laughs> in a way. Um, so it's the plundered. It's the yep. plundered connotation of pillaged and Vikings. And we, we affectionately call our customers Vikings. Because they plunder the shop. They give us money for it, but it's a hot mess when they leave. So, yeah. Yeah, it so. goes back to the only way to express what was going on that first yarn crawl. When oh my somebody gosh. asked, how, how is life going? And the only way I could express it was a horde of Vikings, like, running towards you in a gif. Mm-hmm. And I was like... This. 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 Yeah. <laughs> And there are still many days when it feels like this, you know, and which of which in a way we are grateful because that means we've we've hopefully done a lot of business. Some days we call them marketing days. It's more schmoozing and more conversation and not so many sales going out the door, which is which is part of why I opened the shop, but is also exhausting. And so. the, the marketing days, the people that come in aren't necessarily knitters or crocheters. Mm-hmm. They they could be it. Those we tend, don't know. those tend to happen more on like fest days, or there's just a ton of people in town. It's slightly chilly or too hot or whatever, and they're mm-hmm. looking for air conditioning, and they come in and then have to talk. Well, and and I don't mind that, especially when people are are curious. Yeah, in a good you know in a in in a good natured yeah. or earnest way. I don't mind that at all because you never know. You never know what that might lead to. Um, I was watching. A little clip of the um, interview with Michelle Obama by Robin Ro- Robin Roberts is that the person on ABC? I don't I think know. So maybe I don't I'm know. sorry if I'm messing up people's names, but it was just like you know she's talking about how she's making a top down sweater and she made this and and, so, and the person interviewing her is like so you're you're a knitter, she's like I'm a knitter and she's like and you say that proudly and I was like oh you lost me there. It was one of those and you're proud of that and it was almost like incredulous and I'm just like. Of course she's proud of that. 
So anyway, moving on. I just I just had this moment. It's the same thing as when Kristen, what's her Ritter. butt, Kristen Ritter was being interviewed by Stephen Colbert, and he and he went off. He it was great until he went off on the granny stereotype, and I was just like, we do have grannies who knit, and we love them dearly, but that's not the only person who knits. So it was there, like, you lost me. There's a whole underworld of kids from like six to mm-hmm. 20 who are all learning to knit for the last, you know, 15, well, 20 years. But nobody recognizes them because they're young. And, oh, I wish young people would start knitting. They, they are. They do. And they <laughs> are. And, oh, my gosh. I mean, we're proof of that. We're not the youngest, but we look young for our age. So, um, <laughs> And, and, I mean, Instagram is just full of, of people of all ages, but especially Instagram's younger, a younger crowd on the whole. And there's tons. If you know what you're looking for, there's a whole subculture. It's not even a subculture, but for people who don't know it exists, it feels like a subculture. Anyway, I'll get off my little diatribe about that. Off my soapbox and <laughs> onto our Tuesday check-in. So um, I am furiously knitting and crocheting for Christmas and trying to get to all my other projects on needles, and they are all languishing and very, very sad. I was bored, so I started new ones. Yeah, we're in different places right now. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> all right, take three. Take three. The, um, the downside of filming on my phone is I think I ran out of space and it stopped filming. So we just have to watch really carefully and make sure that it's still filming. Um, and I'll piece everything together. So we'd done our opener. I tried to refilm because I thought it hadn't captured any of our opener. So I'm just going to keep trying to watch um, that it's still filming. This is all crazy. Um, but I, we didn't get anything of what we're working on. No. So you found the stuff that fell on the floor. I did. Everybody missed all of that. <laughs> yes. This is what happens when we're up too late and cats wake us up and parents are traveling and things. So I'm going to keep an eye on the recorder thing and not try to crochet because <laughs> I was doing that on camera. Y'all missed it. I was crocheting on camera and... Not paying attention to if the filming was going right. And I think this, I angled the camera down too far for this part of it, but I don't think I want to get up and work on that. So we're, this is going to be what it's going to be. Um, what are you working on, Liz? So Saturday, I got completely bored with all of my projects that I had here. I was like, oh, I'm going to start something new. So two feeder brooks and three fiber spades later. I'm doing granny squares. Lots and lots. Lots of, and lots. And I was saying before, like, I don't know what was caught on camera before and what wasn't, um, that it looks like you've made a lot of progress. I, I only had, like, four or five of these done when I left on Saturday night because we stayed here till 8. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. Yeah, we, I say, oh, wow, like I wasn't here. I was here, too. I have, I have I finished tired. three more, almost four more. And I have a whole stack of little in various states um, that uh, I'm working on. And you'd asked earlier if I'm working on them in like like one color, one going color boom, at boom, boom. a time. Because let's let's go through this again. How many colors are you using total? Five. And how many colors in each square? Four. So she can you can change. Yeah. How they go? Yeah. yeah. I I like. My color, everybody can see, actually see my colors. So, like, it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, I knew there was one, a two, reason. One, two, three, four. I did the angle all funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it, it, it's rolling through the colors. And um, so, like, I hear I have a whole stack of um, the color changing feeder brook that just happened to be all purple at that those moments. Mm-hmm. And... The color that comes after that is the green. So I'll probably do a whole round of green. And then I have a stack of white ends, ended ones. Ooh. The oatmeal, this which then you there. you get to um, the, do the, the... Oatmeal gets the teal. And so and then I'll do like uh, a couple of forest. center okay. starts Yeah. after I finish all that to where I have, you know, a constantly moving... Um, 
Oh, and non sequitur for people who are like, well, you should clear stuff off your phone. You don't need to keep it on your phone. I know that. I just got lazy. As I forgot never to. As things are supposed to be stored in the cloud, but that when uploading to the cloud takes time and sometimes doesn't work. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so we had moved. I, I was crocheting and then I ripped off what I did for morning meditation this morning um, because I'm making my, my cat gnome, but. I was noticing the stitches were really loose and I don't like them in one spot. I don't want the stuffing to show through too much. So I'm going to rip it out and redo it. It's funny. People say crochet doesn't take as long. When it's intricate, it takes longer. Because, And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, I'm doing some knitting for Christmas too and those things are flying when they should take longer. But it's single this, crochet that always... Yeah. It, and, and there's shaping and there's combining involved. Yeah. Like I've attached the tail to this little body and I just attached the arms but I pulled one out because um, I'm gonna redo a row or two because as I was going I realized I have about three extra stitches because I was just going in a circle and marking the beginning stitch but not which I've lost now because I pulled some stuff out but not counting how many stitches because it's 48 and I don't want to count so um, but I have all the little pieces here, which is really cool. I have, like, this is the little muzzle for the cat. See? It's so cute. Doo, doo, doo. And I have little ears that are ready to go. And a lot of these instructions, and I just got yarn in yarn my mouth. Yarn in my mouth. Eh. Eh. Okay. Um, it's still in there. I think I got it. Go wash my hands after this. Um, so... You make the pieces and crochet them together, and then these will be crocheted onto the piece itself. And then the hat, it looks like, because it's going to have like a witch's gnome hat on top of it. It looks witchy to me, but it's supposed to be gnome I think is going to be one you can take on and off the cat gnome, which is super cute. Um, my favorite part so far have been these little feet. Not the hands, but the feet. And I know, pause, they should all look the same, but they don't because it's a gnome. Um... I was saying when we realized that the camera wasn't working <laughs> that you start with the little pad on the bottom with your pink color, whatever color you want, I'm doing pink, and then you change to your main color and then the toe beans are made by making a puff in, um, in your pad color. So you're pulling the pad color up to that row and only doing the puff stitch with that color. And one of these came out better than the other, but I am, um, I am probably not going to redo it. I like overstitched some stuff because I was saying to Liz when we noticed that the camera went funny before that often when you're changing colors, you can do the last pull through of the stitch before in your new color to make it look seamless, but you actually don't want that here. Like what I ended up doing to not make it the pink spot, like puff in a weird place is I the stitch the single crochet before I finished with the teal I did I the yarn over of the new puff I did with the pink and I do all the stockpiling of partial double crochets on the hook in the pink and then I switch back to the teal for the final pull through of the puff okay that and makes that sense that worked yeah that's that's the Securing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On on this one, I had to overstitch. I secured it with the pink, and then moved on to the next stitch. And with the row that happens after that, you get a really random little spot of pink next to your puff stitch that's surrounded by teal. So I had to do some creative hiding of that on one of these. And the other one, it went really smooth and really well. So I learned as I went. Um, but these will be attached to the front. I think I can finish this guy in another, like maybe tonight at, at sit and stitch, virtual sit and stitches tonight, by the way. Um, if I can focus, I'm not sure if I'd be able to focus enough. Crochet tends to take a little too much energy uh, for virtual sit and stitch. But I don't know if, if I showed him off all finished. No, I don't think we've so, seen him all finished. Right? So I brought him in today because it's, it's the Tuesday check-in. Um, my first gnome that's done, like I, I was showing him off. I remember with the other gnome to say like, look, he's got better balance than the Viking gnome I finished. He's got the poly pellets in him, but I don't know if he was finished before. Like his, his beer hop, the hop hat is attached. His little beer stein 
which I can take. Isn't that so cute? It is. That's the adorable. cutest thing ever. And I keep going back and forth on which way to have it in his hand, but I think this way and then forcing his little hand a little forward. I haven't stitched his hands. Like, I want his arms to kind of be free, and then my brother-in-law can be like, can figure it out for himself. So, um, but number one is done of six. Number two, I might be able to finish. Yeah, I have to. Okay. That's, that's it. That, I haven't cut that yet. She's like, you got something on there. It's, I... Just in case I needed to do more with the hop hat, I hadn't trimmed that totally off. So technically, it's not totally done. It's really close. Um, I'm hoping I can get the cat gnome done this week, if not early in the week. Um, part of the reason the cat gnome is not done is my hand started to hurt because I'm using a teeny tiny little crochet hook. And I've gotten in the habit, There's you can talk about it being held, I used to say like a pencil or on top. And people, a lot of people online call this like cut, like, like a knife, like you're cutting with a knife. So it's a pencil or a knife. And I've switched to the knife way, which apparently is a more traditional way to hold it, that I was always holding it like a, like a pencil. And I've seen people online who get mocked for holding it like a pencil, and I think that's silly. But... Well, it's crocheting, it's regardless crochet, of how you hold it. Yeah, I've seen a couple different people post online about how they've been told they hold it stupid or something, and I think that's ridiculous. They both work. For me, I've started holding it on top. When, when I have to really muscle it through and try to keep my stitches really tight, sometimes holding it like a knife is better for me. And also with my rings, um, when I hold it like a pencil, I have to take this first ring off because it clacks and it just gets in the way. But I've started trying to do it more from on top, and holding on top like a knife works with a lot of the ergonomic crochet hooks. that, And, and we might bring the prim hooks in. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking about bringing the prim hooks in. I hadn't brought them in because if you hold it like a pencil, like I tended to, they weren't very comfortable. But they are if you hold it on top. So, and they're pointy with the ergonomic grip. I think that actually might be a really cool thing to have in the shop eventually. Yes. So, um... Yes, I want to I wanna go back after I talk about all my Christmas presents to talk about, like, the shirt and the Viking and the... I don't know. Maybe we talked about that in the beginning. Yes. Maybe we just let that go. If it's in the first six minutes we film before, we'll include it. And if not, we'll come back to it another time. Okay. Um, I can't remember what we filmed what we didn't because I haven't had time to check the whole six minutes. Because we've done some parts of this three times now. It's been, it's been a morning already. So... Beer Hop Gnome, super cute. I'm super happy with it. I was thinking about putting some hair on the Cat Gnome, too, to have everyone have hair that matches, like, who it's going to. But the, if the hats are removable, and either it's going to look like, uh, like a monk with only hair down, down here, or the hair is going to be attached to the hat, it's going to look weird. So I have to decide. I'll probably do that after I finish all the other gnomes. The reason that my... Um, the reason that... My cat gnome is not done yet, other than when my hand was starting to tingle with this little teeny tiny grippy pulling, you know, I switched over to the other thing that I wasn't going to do until I finished my 3D gnomes, but you know me, I can't stop. <laughs> I get distracted and go, oh, I want to do that now. So I started making um, and playing around with and really honestly somewhat messing up because I started making the cup cozies, the coffee cozies that I want to make. And the first one I made, I was just going to use the mistletoe and the navy and then have a little white face, use some leftover white for the face. And I tried that with intarsia and it looked so poopy, I'm not even showing it to you because I've already ripped it out and redone it. But, so then I just made, I just continued with, this is designed for three colors, but I only did it with two, so I have a gnome that has a little navy face because the navy was the background and the mistletoe is the color changing. So this was my first cup cozy. And then I said, let me do one that is a little more in line with her colors. She had red on the top and blue on the bottom and white for the background. And I'm using leftover white squirrel shuffle or really early white squirrel shuffle from yarn baby has very little speckle in it. So it's pretty much white. So this guy, I, again, I'm using the mistletoe, trying to get all my prim needles unstuck here. The mistletoe has all Christmassy colors in it, but when you're doing just this little bit, like this looks like it would, I just used red yarn. 
my red speckly yeah. yarn. But I use white for the background because I like the, the gnome's face and nose in the white. Cause it's just white beard type of idea. Um, so I use red where it had red in the pattern and navy where it had blue in the pattern. Like I use the, the red and green, but only red got in this one. And I used white, like the white squirrel shuffle for the background. And then I made another one and I flipped things around. So I used navy for the top and the mistletoe for the bottom. And it only in the very bottom here started to hit a little bit of green. And actually it's already back to red again. So I have, I have six family members I'll be making these for. And I have three of them done. And, you know, I just, they're really fun. And these are the ones you would think because it's fingering weight yarn, it would take me a lot longer to make. But apparently with color work, I just fly through it. You, I have fun with it. You like a little bit more complication in yeah. your knitting. That keeps me going. Let's be honest. So um, I'll show these off on a cup cozy another time. I, I want to make sure we have time to do things before the shop opens and stuff. So I took a break because I figured... Even with the double points, which are kind of weird to take on planes, because if you drop one and it rolls, and but the prims are less likely to run away from me. I have my little my little prims here. Um, love these little guys. They only come in some sizes, though. That's the thing is they're not available in all sizes. But I I am amazed at how little yarn these take <coughs> for each one. Um, I, to finish my thought from before. I am going to try to leave some, some of the knitting or maybe some extra knitting for the plane ride out, which won't happen for several weeks, but I want to try to get my 3D stuff done. These guys are going to take up a lot of room in my suitcase and bag, but, um, and people have been cautioning me, take them on your carry-on. We'll see if they fit on my carry-on, but rather than working on a 3D gnome at the last minute, I'd rather be working on cup cozies or maybe backup cup cozies last minute, because like... This is, I've made three of these and I used, it was, this color was half of this one, like background, everything was used for the whole, the whole thing of it, but half of the stitching, a quarter of each of these. And I still have like most of this left. We can weigh it, but yet it's just, I still have tons of leftover. This is like half a skein of white and of the white squirrel shuffle. Um, yeah, one of those is kind of dead. We have new batteries. We just have to put them in. So I can make a billion of these. I feel like, I feel like I might make one that is just the color, the, the mistletoe with white and I might make one that's just the Navy with the white. Um, I really like the white for the background color though. I don't yeah, think I'm, yeah, there's does. 88. There's, I've only used 12 grams of this Yeah. in all of the red or green of these. So mucho mucho cup cozies out of just one skein of each of these yarns like i i'm gonna make at least six you, you could probably do just white and the mistletoe mm -hmm. because that would give you your white My background color. and your color change mm -hmm. and be able to do all six of them yeah i could keep going i i like changing things out though i'd like to get one that's like this but it's got mostly green in it with the with the navy we'll see how that all goes but I'm having a lot of fun with that. As I was saying before, I don't know if it caught, caught on camera or not. Um, my other works in progress are bemoaning being in timeout and being in the corner because I'm really not working on them. But I also feel like I can't work on them until, or not substantially, until all of my Christmas presents are done. Because the, these crocheted gnomes are both bigger, some of them. They're all by different they're different artists. I just searched gnomes on Ravelry and sometimes I search specific topics of gnomes on Ravelry. They're all by different, um, artists there. I think all the ones that I've picked for Christmas are crochet, but, um, they're taking a lot longer. So I don't know if they're all going to be bigger. I guess big as this guy. Um, I'll feel bad if they're not, I'll have to think about remaking them if they're really teeny tiny after I'm done with them. But um, they're taking a lot longer than I thought they would. I was like, oh, making little gnomes, I'll bust them out. Because that very first Viking gnome I made was, um, he was, he, it took me a day. And he was knit, but he was also little. So I was just like, oh, my Christmas presents are going to be so easy. Mm -mm. This is, 
where when people say, but it's smaller, those that do crochet and knitting know just because it's smaller does not mean it's faster. This this guy's this guy's hat took like half a skein of yarn. It's so heavy. And it's there's the, so much it's the leaves. It's yeah, it's the dragon scale um effect yeah. it, of the leaves. It was it that took forever. And I love it. I love how it came out. I think it's fantastic. But oh my gosh. I, I see lots of really <laughs> cool things that it's like, do the dragon scale and you can get this look. And it's like, the dragon scale has an awesome, awesome look. But it is seriously time consuming. It's, yeah. I mean, I love that I did it. But oh my gosh. Now I'm just like, yeah. There's so much left to do for Christmas. Um, so this one, because I had the colors at home last week, I did him. Um, now, usually I start with my niece and nephew because it's like if nothing else gets done, my niece and nephews need to get done. I mean, they're older now, so it's not as like, oh, my gosh, Christmas has to happen for the kids. But um, I still would like to have them done. So I there's a lot. Uh, I'm still plotting and planning for Christmas, but I've got a good chunk underway. So, um, yeah, I have to finish my pot holders. I don't know if that got on. Yeah, she's making <coughs> she's making pot holders. I was going to say do that this we week. yeah, the beginning 6 minutes we talked about how I'm furiously going and you're hopefully close to being done. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I I ordered the kids' gift cards because this is their gift card year. Ah. I ordered those last night, so I was like, "Woohoo, Christmas is done except for the adults." I make so. all my presents, and some of that is is because I don't even have money for gift cards lately. <laughs> Self self employed, running a yarn shop, supporting myself. So, people get what they get, you know. So, thank you all for your purchases. <laughs> it keeps the shop going. So, um, yeah, I think after we may or may not have caught on camera that we were here until eight o'clock on Saturday because it was the light up the night. Christmas parade festival oh my gosh yeah it's it's been it's been a weekend right I, I feel like I've barely recovered and we're diving into our week now um, I have a bunch of emails to get back to um, if you ordered stuff last week and you didn't get a shipping notification from us we are packing it up today so we can send it out tomorrow morning most and take four <laughs> We're having major technical issues, so I just want to, um, we just want to end. Because I think it's a memory issue on my, I think it's a bigger issue on my phone. So anyway, um, we, what were we saying? Um, Schedule. Tonight Ending. is virtual sit and stitch. And um, that's from 7 to 9 p.m. And you get in with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. <laughs> tomorrow um i said last week i have a doctor's appointment this week and it's tomorrow morning so our vsc may be abbreviated or may not happen um don't worry it's just regular follow-up nothing super critical that i know of and then um thursday is dear becky and lizzie if you have a question for us then you should email liz at sundragonartandfiber.com and we have um this sunday well, okay, let me finish going through the week. Um, Friday is virtual sit and stitch. And that, again, is from 7 to 9 p.m., same as tonight. Get in with the shop phone number. She's already said it. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, this Sunday is our once a month dual platform virtual sit and stitch. So December 11th from 1 to 5 p.m., you can get in with the shop phone number on Zoom. Or you can check out what's happening over on Facebook. You get to see me and hear Zoom. If you have any technical issues with Zoom or just want to, like, peek and not go on Zoom and see what happens on Sundays, um, it's a whole lot of fun. So I'm going to go clear a whole bunch of things off of my phone. I just rebooted my phone, so hopefully it's happier. And, and we'll see what we can do moving forward. So bye, everybody. Why? Mm. Wish us luck today. I think what I was saying when it cut out before is we never know what's going to happen on a Tuesday when it's rainy. It could mean no one comes by. It could mean everyone comes by. And we just won't know. So, so we're going to go get ready for whatever happens. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.